I'm Scott Allen Miller. This is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. And today, a lot of people have been asking me over the course of the years about what it's like and what you need to do and what things they should consider when talking about bringing their animals, like their dogs and their cats, down to Nicaragua. We're going to get to that on today's show right after the bump. As many of my regular viewers know, my family brought down two dogs with us when we moved from the United States. We have what is now a five or six year old Blue Heeler Mix who is running around behind me and a three year old Boston Terrier. They both love living in Nicaragua and they are very glad that they got to come along with our family and make this move. They have a much more outdoor lifestyle than they were used to in the United States. We are lucky we live in an area with a very large garden and our animals love being able to run around. They have lived in the city and they did enjoy getting to know all the neighbors and the smells of the city, but they prefer the big garden and being able to be outside all the time and when they were younger and lived in Texas we had a much smaller yard but we did have a yard they were able to run in and out we'd leave the doors open and they were out a lot there as well they are our babies as many of your pets are for you and bringing them to Nicaragua with, with us was an absolute imperative in fact being able to bring our dogs safely to Nicaragua was an important consideration in where in the world we would want to be able to live of course being able to put them on a plane and fly somewhere would allow them to go just about anywhere but some places are easier than others in places that are very close to where we could drive them to to get into an airport was a factor now for us, we moved down at the height of COVID in early 2021. So it was very difficult to do a lot of logistics in moving. At that time, we considered whether we wanted to drive them down or fly them down. To fly down at that time, the only possible option was a private flight, which we did. The private flight ended up, and this was in 2021. So as you know, inflation has hit pretty hard. So expect the prices have gone up, even though there are more flights now. And it was about $16,000. But the upside to that is that we managed to get the dogs down completely safely in minimal time with minimal effort and stress on the dogs. We were able to move myself, my wife, my children, and an extraordinary amount of luggage because the entire plane was ours. This wasn't just a private flight that we were a part of. It was a completely chartered flight just for my family. So the dogs were able to be not just in the cabin with us, but loose in the cabin. They did have to have collars, but they didn't have to have harnesses. They didn't have to have cages of any sort. They could sit on our laps. They could roam around in the cabin. They could just lay in the aisle. And that's what they did and that worked out really great. My dogs have some issues, so we had some special considerations as well. My little one is a Boston Terrier. That means he has a short nose, and that means that it is not safe for him to fly in cargo because it can trigger respiratory issues. He's pretty healthy. He probably would have been just fine, but in general, short-nosed uh, breeds cannot fly in that way. It's just not safe. Our other dog we have, they're both rescues, uh, our, our Blue Healer Mix, uh, we rescued her because she's incredibly nervous and she cannot under any conditions be crated. Even in a house, even for just a few minutes, a crate causes absolute panic and could easily trigger a heart attack for her under good conditions where we're close by. She can never be left alone. Even in a house, she will tear the doors apart. And we have found her roaming the, the neighborhood looking for us when we went out to eat when we lived in Texas because she figured out how to open locked doors to get out of the house. And she will tear anything apart to get out. So the amount of damage that she will do to a house or to anything if you leave her alone is really severe. So we really had to do some extreme things that gave us very few options when it came to moving our dogs down. Now, after... Years here living in Nicaragua, we have come to learn a few things. And one of those is that we are very appreciative of the fact that we made the, de the decision to do the slightly more expensive private flight down than to try to do the drive with our dogs for a lot of reasons. There's some safety concerns. There's a lot of time involved in doing that drive. And now knowing people who have driven down and become trapped here or semi-trapped with vehicles in Nicaragua, we learn just how problematic it can be to have a vehicle here. And that's something that we're very glad we were able to avoid by flying down. At the time, we thought that bringing one of our vehicles down might have been sensible, that the advantages of going from country to country and just bringing the dogs uh, over time by land would have made sense. That, that seemed so reasonable and now seems so crazy. I can't believe that we actually thought it. The amount extra that we had to pay to fly down really wasn't that much more when you add up all the gas, the problems with the car, the need to return with the car, the hotels, and so forth. It was still would have been cheaper to drive, but by how much, it's hard to say. Not all that much considering we brought four people tons of luggage and the dogs down on the flight we were able to get a really good value on that flight 
and get everyone, including the dogs, moved down very safely, very quickly. There's no way it would have been as safe for the dogs to have done that drive, let alone deal with any of the like crating or anything like that, the compression, potential risks, all those things. None of that. Now, for those of you who are looking at bringing your dogs down now, now that we don't have COVID and you have more options, what can you do? Well, so first of all, you can do the drive, but be aware the drive is extremely long and some people do it, and especially people with pets have a tendency to do it a lot more, right? It just makes sense. That's, that is a key reason why you may want to consider doing that mode of transportation to come down and that can work. And if you're bringing a lot of pets, that can work out better. If you have really large pets, that might work out better, but it's important to be aware that there are many borders to go across, a lot of requirements, and often it's going to take an extraordinary amount of time, a lot more than if you were simply driving down on your own. And a lot of this goes without saying, it should be obvious that if you're bringing pets, you're going to have to make a lot of bathroom stops, potentially in places where you don't want to stop. You're going to have to have a lot more paperwork. Different countries have different rules, so you have to figure out the current rules at every country for every border you plan to cross. And of course, you can skip some, but then you're driving farther around, so on and so forth. So it gets pretty complicated. And some places like Honduras require you to have a doctor that meets you at the border. That's really complicated if it's not a country where you have direct resources. If you're coming to Nicaragua, well, like I know vets and I can have one meet you at the border. But if you, you don't need that in Nicaragua, but in Honduras you do. And so if you're coming into Honduras, you have to arrange for that. And while that is possible to be arranged, Honduras has a shortage of vets overall. And how do you find one? How do you know they're going to be there at the right time? It's, it's complicated. So those are things that you have to think about and address and it just takes a lot more work and a lot more time and all those things add up to more money now if you're retired and the time doesn't matter or you're just a driving fanatic and you want to do that drive and it's a good excuse which was part of my reason for wanting to do it then those things could could be just fine and this may be a big adventure and the journey is more important than the destination so i totally recognize that that could be the case the biggest problem with doing that is that at the end and it, the whole thing's probably pretty good and more people should consider it than actually do it at the end, you have a vehicle here in Nicaragua, and that's where the big problems come in. We're going to do an episode coming up really soon where we're talking about the problems of having a vehicle in Nicaragua. But we've touched on this a lot in the past, and I'll touch on it again, that basically there's no way you're going to be able to leave that vehicle here, and you're going to be sorry as soon as you get in. So the thing you're going to want to do is turn around and get that vehicle back out of Nicaragua and back to wherever it came from, presumably the U.S. or Canada, as quickly as possible. If you have any plans that it's going to stay for any length of time, expect to be sorry. One way or another, it's probably going to take a lot more paperwork than you're anticipating. It'll probably be costly. And again, if you're retired and you have nothing to do and you're perfectly happy to spend a large amount of your time dealing with the paperwork of keeping your car in country, then by all means, if that's something that you're passionate about, that's fine. But for most people, that's going to be a lot of time, potentially a lot of money and a headache that may cause them some real consternation in the future. And as I say all the time, we've had friends who basically ended up living here for a few months turning around and leaving because they it was so complicated for them because they had brought in a vehicle and then they determined that they had to get out with it. Now, the story is more complicated than that. They didn't just bring in a generic Toyota Corolla and have these like it was bigger. But the problems are very basic. Bringing in a vehicle when you are not a resident, not there's one very specific moment when you become a resident that you get to import a vehicle one time. That, if that's what you're doing, could be an exception to this general guide. But other than that, and even that is generally not recommended, but it is a, well, here's a moment where it might make sense. Outside of that, bringing in a vehicle is almost always something that you will regret. So just be aware that if you're doing it for your pets, as long as your plan is to turn around and drive it right back out within a few weeks or even a month or two, probably just fine and probably a good decision. But if you're thinking that it's going to come down and it's going to stay or be your vehicle or you're going to be here long term with it, chances are you're going to regret that because it's going to be complicated and expensive and not be a solution to anything. You should have just purchased a car here after you had arrived. Alternatively, there are airlines that will bring your dogs down depending on your dog of course. Now this I have to caution people about. I'm very wary of bringing dogs on airlines in general. There's a lot to go wrong and a lot of people have horror stories of terrible things that have happened to their pets on airlines. There's just a lot of danger if your pet needs to ride in cargo. If your animal can fit under the seat in front of you, you can bring them on your lap or whatever. If you qualify for that with the airlines that you're flying, every airline has their own rules, every pet has their own needs and sizes or whatever. If you're able to carry your pet on and always have possession of them, then that is probably what you want to do. That will almost certainly work just fine. 
A lot of people fly with their pets in cargo. And Valentina, who does our thumbnails, just brought her two dogs, who are of fair size all the way from Merida, Mexico, to Cancun and on to Buenos Aires, passing through Bogota. They got to fly an incredibly long distance and they arrived safe and sound. So this can go just fine. And lots of people do this every day. However, this is a spot where I need to caution people about Nicaragua. And this is an incredibly negative thing that has to be said, but it's we're talking about life and death. We have to discuss it. And that is that there is a potential. It is important to understand at the moment, if you have pets in cargo, at the moment that you land, at the airport in Nicaragua, you are powerless. There is nothing in this universe that will protect you or your dogs. At that time, you are not a resident, you are not a tourist, you are not anything. You're in a no man's land between wherever you came from and Nicaragua. And during that time, neither you nor your dogs have the slightest rights whatsoever. This is true no matter where you go in the world. You have no rights until you've entered a country. And even once you enter as a tourist, your number of rights are relatively limited, but you do have legal protections. But before you enter a country, you have no legal protections and you have no legal recourse. You don't have the ability to call police. You don't have ability to call connections. You may not even have the legal right to pick up a phone. You can't use a lawyer. You cannot do anything. The airlines cannot help you. And there is in that moment a possibility of your dogs being taken off of a plane and anything can happen to them and there is nothing you can do about it. And we know firsthand of people who have had their dogs taken out, put onto a hot tarmac, and allowed to sit there until they paid extraordinary fees to people privately to allow their dogs into the country. Because their dogs are literally cooking on the tarmac, you have minutes to make decisions and potentially minutes to come up with outrageous amounts of money, and there is quite literally, no matter what you imagine, no recourse that you can possibly have at that moment. The person who's doing it to you may be completely in the wrong, both ethically and legally, but you are not the person who has any legal recourse against them. The government may have legal recourse against them, and if the government finds out sometime in the future that this happened, they may take some action, but it is not on your behalf. It is their own action. So it's very important to understand. You have no one you can call and nothing you can do at that moment. You are utterly powerless, and your dogs could be used as a bargaining chip, your cats, whatever, and people understand that you have just paid a huge amount of money to bring animals in, put them into a position of danger, and now you are utterly powerless to do anything about it, and if you can't produce the money they want, they may allow your dogs to expire on the tarmac, and too bad for you because you put them into a situation where you had no legal right to have them reclaimed. The same thing could happen to your luggage, but your luggage is not going to die on you, and they know that, and their luggage can, if you have something in your luggage that they, they decide is going to go into inspection, it's gonna take a while, it can be taken off site from the airport, but you can collect it the next day or the day after, whatever, there's a process for that, and while it's annoying, it's just time consuming and your luggage doesn't die, but your animals might. And there is nothing in this world that would cause me to put an animal that I loved onto a commercial flight in cargo where it would arrive in Nicaragua and be potentially left on the tarmac. And remember at all times, your flights are going to be hot. There aren't cold flights into Nicaragua. It isn't like you're gonna fly down. The dog's gonna have lots of water. They're gonna be able to sit out there for 12 hours and be, just be slightly uncomfortable. That'll never be the case. It will always be incredibly hot. It'll always be in the middle of the sunlight because uh, they don't. I don't believe there's any cargo flights for pets in the middle of the night and they will not have access to water, they will have been on a plane, they could be already in distress, and that situation on the tarmac will be both a panic situation for them, they'll be away from you, they'll be in a lot of heat, and of course that doesn't happen to the average animal, but it happens to actual animals, it is an actual problem, and until the government empowers someone to take legal action against the people who do that and have real repercussions, then that is a fear that you have to have, that is just a very specific moment where you're in a position of extreme danger with your animals, and the only thing you can do to protect yourself is by not being in that situation. Otherwise, you're just putting your animals at risk. Of course, if you're carrying tens of thousands of dollars of cash that you have to declare, then people know you have that money, then you may be able to come up with the funds necessary to save your animals, but that you're, that's the kind of position you could find yourself in. And that is not a thing that very many people want. And it is, if you're in a position to be able to pay those kinds of fees comfortably, then why not just take a private plane and skip the problem in the first place, have your animals with you at all times. So that is something that unfortunately we just have to address. It is, we have very close friends who have had that happen to them with their animals. Luckily they were able to come up with the funds. They were able to get their animals saved. Their animals 
were very, very close to, to expiring on the runway right there in front of them and they were so terrified there was nothing they could do they had just spent so much money to bring these animals that they're like their children down with them and one of them did die shortly thereafter probably not because of that event but certainly it could have been exacerbated it was very soon thereafter it was an older animal uh, but it's it, it's a very real possibility that the two are connected the others are all fine now that one was old so it may have died of natural causes anyway but that situation just absolutely awful, and I cannot warn people enough to be wary of that situation. So driving down will protect you, private flights will protect you, flying with the animal in the cabin will protect you, but unfortunately, just lots of people, the affordable thing to do is to put your animals into cargo, fly down, and you know most airlines with most animals are okay with that, but the problems that happen after they unload the animals are not the airline's problems, it's not for them to warn you about, and there, there's just no process, that is a moment. And this is the thing that people don't understand is in that moment, you're, you're not through customs yet. You're not through border control yet. And there isn't a specific person that you can run to and be like, you have to save my animals. There isn't that person. You don't have that resource until you're further along in the process. And so it's just the only protection you have is by not letting yourself be in that, in that position. So I, I, I can't strongly enough warn people how, how scared I would be if my animals had to do that. So recommending that as an option to anyone is not something that I feel comfortable doing. Beyond that one logistical problem of getting your animals safely into Nicaragua, generally bringing animals to Nicaragua is a pretty painless and cheap process. There's some basic paperwork you should have that includes a uh, bill of clean health and all of the uh, you know shots and vaccines and stuff that you're expected to have from your home country, like rabies vaccines. You need to have all those ducks in a row and uh, just have that paperwork with you in you know quadruplicate or whatever. Make sure you can hand a copy to absolutely everyone. Make sure you have digital copies. Make sure you have a way to print it out just in case because that's just how things work here, right? Sometimes you just need everything printed out, be ready to hand it to people, and uh, and be confident that you have everything. Look, I have everything possible. I have a vet in the United States lined up, someone who has the ability to, to write the international paperwork, have them be able to fax or email anything you may need. Uh, make sure you have a vet that can, that can talk to someone just in case, um, if possible. Have a vet lined up in Nicaragua who can speak on your behalf just in case. I've never had anyone need that, but just in case. Good to have those things. And, uh, uh, and we've never known other than, you know, issues on the tarmac. Once you're in the country, you've never known anyone to have any problems whatsoever. Having pets here is very easy. It's very safe. They can have a very good life here. Be aware that heartworm is a major problem. And so you want to make sure you have medication for that. Fleas and ticks are actually not, not that big of a problem, but of course you want to have medications for that. Same as always. Once in a while, we will have very specific medications that are hard to get here. I've been known to run to Costa Rica to pick them up, which is a huge pain, but it's doable. So, you know, not, uh, not the end of the world. You can ship things in from the U.S. Make sure you have enough medication with you when you come in for a certain amount of time, just in case it takes time to figure out where your supply of whatever medication you need is going to come from. Uh, and be aware that there are many, many, many loose animals here in Nicaragua. So dogs, especially, but cats as well, your dogs will almost, your pets will almost certainly engage with, you know, not wild animals, but street animals. And so it's very important that they be vaccinated. It's very important that they be spayed and neutered. Uh, and um, you want to just be very aware of their potential health concerns and stay on top of doctor's visits and those kinds of things. For us, we spent our first year here living on the beach and I used to take my dogs walking up and down the beach every day. Be aware, streets are very close here. And if you have a dog that is not from here and you let them go as every local will tell you to do, the chances are they will be run over almost immediately. So don't do that ever. Don't let anybody who tells you that is absolutely not caring about your animal. And it is very unfortunate that the culture of animal care in Nicaragua has a tendency towards, well, just let them fend for themselves. And people don't want them to get run over. And people do try pretty hard to dodge animals in the street. But the idea that people and animals are just going to run out and be run over on a regular basis is completely accepted. Now, it may sound really awful that people are allowed, or are allowed, are willing to allow for the possibility of animals just being run over willy-nilly, but we honestly feel that the care for children being run over is even lower. I had someone who was probably a 15-year-old drag a maybe one and a half-year-old directly in front of my car just the other day. Didn't look at all 
didn't care that the child was going to be run over before him, didn't do anything to move along faster, nothing. Just stepped out into traffic in front of a moving car, and this is an everyday thing when you're driving. And it's not just children, it's the elderly, it's people running to work. I was going down the street the other day and someone ran straight from a door, across the sidewalk, down steep steps, and into the road. And had I not swerved, I would have just clipped him. He never once turned his head. He didn't look to see if traffic was coming until traffic was dodging him. This is how people behave here. People are run over nonstop. The number of accidents you see in the street is, it's truly mind boggling. People marvel at the sign, the, 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 the show, the spectacle of people being hit in traffic. It's almost like entertainment. Uh, and, and for some reason, because of that, people find everyone else getting run over to just be very funny and people just let it happen. And they themselves, just because, I don't know why, but people just go out into traffic like you wouldn't believe. And because they do it with people, of course, they're going to do it with animals as well. So when people say, oh, no, it's fine. Let your dog run loose. Why would you put him on a leash? It's because they are completely willing to let their dogs or their children play in the street and just take their chances. And it's true that in having done that over time, the number of people or dogs that get hit is fewer and fewer as survival of the fittest makes those that are less likely to play in the street or more likely to listen for cars are the ones that keep having babies. So they just eventually become more averse to being in the road. But that is literally what's going on. And so do not listen to people say that. I cannot possibly stress this enough because people will put real pressure on you to put your dogs in danger. And your dogs, if you're coming from somewhere other than Nicaragua, I guarantee they don't have any of that DNA filtering that Nicaraguan dogs have. And as it is, it is very dangerous to be an animal or a person in Nicaragua if you're going to get into the street. Now, of course, if you come from the US and you know, look both ways and pay attention and be defensive, you're fine. Like no one's gonna clip you. People are really good about it because they're dodging people stepping right into their cars all the time. But your animals don't have that training. And so they will very easily be in a lot of danger. So be very careful about letting them play on the beaches. Because even like at Las Penitas, if you let your dog play on the beach, they can go through the beach, through a restaurant and be on the road in seconds long and no one's gonna stop them. Right, because every dog just goes out and plays in the street and they're used to dodging cars or getting hit just a little bit or whatever. And your dog is not prepared for that, but will not know that the other dogs are going to do something different. They're going to follow them into the street. They're just going to go straight. It's so dangerous. Keep your dogs on leashes. That's just, it's just a necessity. But we lived our first year on the beach and I would walk them way down the beach road every day and they enjoyed that. That worked pretty well, but it was a lot of work having to walk them that far every day. It was the only way for them to get enough space because the beach is so long and narrow. We never could just let them run around. When we lived in the middle of the city in Labo Rio, that worked better. I was able to walk them in different places around the city. They got to know large portions of the city and everybody got to know them, but they always had to be unleashed. But we did have a colonial with a large space in the middle of the house. So they're able to run in big areas inside the house and they liked that well enough. But now that we live in a reparto farther out, we're in the, we're in the far uh, parts of a barrio, uh, we have a big yard, we have a large house with multiple openings, so the dogs are able to just tear through the yard and through the house all day long and run all over the place. They're really enjoying that. So think carefully about where you're looking at living and what you'll need for animals. Of course, there's lots of farmland, lots of open countryside where you could have animals that can just run and run and run and be very, very happy and healthy, or if you have small animals that need to live in the house. And of course, I'm doing all this. You can hear my parrot in the background complaining as well. Please do not get a parrot unless it's a rescue. Ours is an old rescue whose owner uh, passed away and she needed it or he needed, who knows, uh, a place to go. And so we took in this parrot and uh, we're doing everything we can to give him a good life as he is 28 years old and uh, has never been, never been alone. Um, and parrots often will pass away with their owners just within a few weeks or whatever they tend to become very sad and and not be able to survive uh, on their own he's done very well he's actually thriving here uh, and has been here for a number of months uh, does not seem to be showing uh, significant signs of depression and is actually pretty happy he's got a lot more space a lot more activity a lot more open area more more visibility the dogs are get along with him just fine they run up and kind of look at him and they, they throw things at each other or whatever they don't actually play in person but uh so in general, bringing pets to Nicaragua, really not a big problem. It's, it's cheap and easy, but the one most obvious path that almost everyone wants to take is not one that I could ever recommend. I implore you to 
really reconsider whether or not to do that and find another way to bring your animals down. I do know there are services. I don't know of the services, but I do know that they exist of people who just drive back and forth between Nicaragua and the United States, and that's how they make their money delivering animals one direction or the other, or other things one direction or another. They're basically shipping services, but they only make financial sense for animals, other things you would just put in cargo or whatever. But that does exist. Find someone who's doing that or pay someone just to do it for you uh, and uh, and have it driven down if, if you don't want to do the drive. And if you're going to do the drive, just plan on almost certainly turning around and taking your car back, and that will likely be the answer. But other than that, uh, I hope that you have good luck bringing your animals down. The last thing we want to do is have someone move down and be separated from their fur babies. They're an important part of all of our lives. And I'm going to turn the camera around as mine is right here with me as I'm doing this episode. This is Mia, my blue healer, who is the one who really caused us one, our other dog. One way or another, we could have brought him down. There are so many options for getting him here safely. And he's actually right over there sleeping, but he's asleep. So he's really boring to look at. But this one's been running back and forth as I do the show. And she loves when I come outside because it's she knows I'm going going to be here for a little bit and she comes out and plays whenever I'm doing the show. So thank you for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to support the channel and help support Mia the Blue Healer, you can buy me a coffee or her something that doesn't have caffeine because dogs should not have caffeine at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. As always, tell your friends about the show, post on social media, and I will see all of you tomorrow.